leaving Brighton was was probably one of the saddest moments in in my career. My dad focused just in, on my education. It's like values, integrity, and football is it would be a consequence of that. Everything is a is a consequence of a your effort, your attitude, yeah. your mentality. Everything came with a responsibility. Yeah? I think we spoke we spoke about that, um, and it was about you know I mean I was really young age, and I said to my dad, um, I wanted to be the best footballer in the world, and he and he said okay, like then you know what it takes. We're living in this world right now that everything has to be yeah. towards the outside instead of towards the inside. Then it's like we're taking decisions not based on what we want to do. Yeah. We're taking decisions based on how it looks outside. We cannot lie. Yeah? It's like life, there is suffering in life, mm. like all of us, uh, in different levels. Um, and in my career, I had suffering and I had difficult moments, like ups and downs. <laughs> we don't control what happens to us, we just control how we respond to it. Yeah. Last times it was my last year in, uh, when I was playing for Valencia, for example. It's, 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 I was injured, I came back, I wasn't playing as much, um, and I got into a like dark place. Um, a healed human being, a fixed human being, is much more be beautiful than a human being who never suffered. Why people remember you is, is because how you make them feel. I just remember the parade here in, in Brighton, for example, it's like, like, I've got goosebumps, you know what I mean? It's like, there is a moment in my, in my career that I felt in peace that it was my last game for Brighton. And the sadness is there. The sadness is there. But as we said earlier, life is about suffering. Life is about leaning forward. Lean forward. Lean forward. And that's how I felt. <laughs>
In June 2019, he was appointed as a senior player development coach at the club before following Graham Potter to Chelsea on the 8th of September 2022. He's a player I've watched many times, a true legend both on and off the pitch. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the one and only... Bruno to the podcast. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Um, thank you so much for having me. I'm oh, just mate, listen, looking forward to this. It's going to be, um, it's great. Look, we obviously met up before and had a bit of a chat. And I just, like I said, been up at the MX and watched you play many times. And um, it's a real honour to have you on. So look, we're buzzing. And great to have you with me, mate. Thank you, mate. <laughs> this is a, a lovely, a lovely three team here that I'm looking yeah. forward to. Two good friends of mine, quite genuinely yeah, exactly. good friends of mine. So yeah, let's see what happens Amazing. and enjoy it. Eh? Well look, we're going to crack on. We're going to kick off as we always do. So we're going to go in with our life in 60 seconds to start with and our first one. For me, like this is all about people's stories, right? And a story has somewhere to start. So just kick us off. Tell me something about, tell me something about life growing up and how that shaped who sits in front of us today. I Probably it's a uh I've been so, so uh, lucky to have a, a structured family when I was really young uh, with all the basics covered. Uh, and my parents gave me the most important thing that it was a, a good education. A good education to be able to take more good decisions than bad decisions. That obviously took me to be sitting right now here with you guys. Mm. Um, and that's the thing that I value the most. You know, I mean, that's uh, why I think it's education is that important and try to understand kids right now and young people and help them in that development is so so important mm -hmm. and yeah that would be you know what i mean uh, that would be me well, t t uh, i'm keen in about that. that tell us a little bit more let's delve a little bit deeper into that about uh, growing up as a child and the love of football where that first come from and and i'm, I'm keen to tap into the education side mm -hmm. of it especially i guess we've you as well go and the stuff that you do going into schools i'll be keen to to talk about that but just share a little bit more about what was life growing up in spain tell, tell yeah for know. me I, I was really lucky as i said because um i grew up in until i was 15 in three small villages that, that allowed me to play outside mm. all the time and have a lot of freedom and, and i thought that was key for me because i obvious like all the time love football i cannot remember my life without kicking a, a football <laughs> I, I actually cannot remember then just being able to play in the streets just being able to go around uh, these small villages and and spending time with my friends it, that was me you know i mean not nothing else uh, than enjoying life and and thinking about uh, football but i always explain as well like something that i think helped me a lot Two of my best friends who were neighbors, imagine uh, living in a small village um, in the countryside. My neighbors, they had a farm. And the two kids, more or less same, same age, um, we became best friends. And with my brother, we used to go to the farm all the time. But now what I'm thinking is like, probably we were working because these two kids at age 12, 13, 14, they had to, ha to help the family through you know what i mean in, in that process of like looking after the farm uh, with pigs horses you know what i mean goats everything and i was there you know what i mean with them like all the time i never felt i was working you always felt like it was just having fun with them and just cleaning and you know what i mean and moving things and but i think i understood how hard people they work how they are no excuses these two kids they went through their young age uh helping their family working i'm telling you really hard sometimes we used to go to a land that they had far away and we used to be watering all that land for 12 hours you know what i mean and i was maybe 12. Wow. you know what i mean it's like we used to take the horses in the morning with one of with the oldest the older son we took two horses and we going up to the land be 12 hours there taking like pack lunch or something water water the whole land and come back uh, maybe at 10 o'clock or midnight you know what i mean it's like that was me at 12 13 years old and, uh, and that's it was for me amazing <coughs> yeah. to experience it but i think as well shaped me to actually there are no like excuses there are no you know just like you just do it you know what i mean it's just like and try to enjoy that whatever comes the, this, the, uh, am i right in thinking from that that strong work ethic, that's what's instilled in you yeah. then from a young age or whatever you relate that to as you get older. But 
how that helps you with football. No. Yeah, completely. That's why I think is is it helped me massively uh, to just do it. You know what I mean? It's just like whatever it takes. And again, you know what I mean? It's like in, I've been lucky that football has been my passion all the time, and and always put all the effort possible. You know what I mean? And I think, as I said, maybe that period of time of my life, I'm seeing obviously my parents working hard, helped me to see that. Yeah, if you want something, you have to just fight for it and and consistently. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not just like yeah now or it's not about motivation because motivation is not always there and sometimes it's about discipline you know what i mean it's like because it's difficult to be motivated all the time it's just that consistent discipline that you put every single day but on that i certainly wasn't 13 or 14 when i worked out the history of growing up no. um, and what that contributed to understanding to work hard how old were you when you worked that out or is it something you've reflected on over a long period of time and within that how much of that was a specific um, conscious effort by your parents for you to be like that Um, I think obviously you reflect on time and then you, you understand okay you try to understand why you've been that way and that's why I'm really grateful you know what I mean for that education that I said earlier, my parents allowing me and giving, the, giving me the freedom to do and experience all of this mm-hmm. and just don't put any pressure on me. And as a footballer, for example, uh, I never had the pressure from my parents, never. Like when I was young, um, I, it would be me asking my dad, right. um, what do you think about the game? <clears throat> and he was always really harsh on, on me. And that helped me massively after, yeah. because the first thing that I've done when I became professional and when you are growing up, it's instead of just focusing on, okay, I did, did this was good or really good, I was focusing, okay, how can I improve? Yeah. Because I didn't, I could have done this better and better. I had my mom balancing off, but she was like, now you played really well. <laughs> and I had my dad, you know what I mean? Like, they would say, yes, that's good, but what about this and this and this? And that shaped me into when I became professional, or even before, to focus as well on the not the good things. How can I keep improving? Was that driven by your dad's criticism of you? Yeah. During that time? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> but, but it would be a criticism um, that he was always asked by me. My dad right. never intervened if I wouldn't ask. Right. Like he wouldn't say anything. He would just drive and, you know what I mean, like speak about other things. But if I always, after the games, would ask him, like, right. come on, Dad, give me a mark. But that's one of your gifts then. Because if you look at most young people who play football now, particularly when they watch our boys, yeah. the dads are living their failed dream through their child, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Throwing abuse, you should be doing this, the ref's this, and whatever else. <coughs> yeah, completely. And it's rare that you have a good communication with your, your lad on the way home or your girl or whatever about the game if the dad chooses just to be negative and, and pick on you. So if you actually went and dug out um, yeah. constructive feedback yeah. on how to be better in the pursuit of being a professional. Yeah, completely. It's, it's about prioritizing what you think is the best for your kid. Mm. Okay, my dad focused just in, on my education. It's like values, uh, integrity. And football is, it would be a consequence of that. Yeah. Instead of like, okay, I'm gonna focus on their football or my football and instead of like just trying to help the kid to understand about taking right decisions about taking because everything is a is a consequence of a uh, your effort your attitude yeah. your mentality like it doesn't matter i mean that's giving advices to kids like how to execute a, a, a decision or how to play football that, that's that's you know what i mean that's not gonna make the difference the difference is gonna that's the, that's the coach's job yeah what's gonna make the difference if you help to your kid to understand what it takes mm. and the right mentality and the right attitude that's what's gonna help massively because then for me that once you instill values in in someone then you're not defined by what your job is or what you do growing up right yeah like if if it's just focused on the football and they become a footballer but they haven't then got their values, what then happens then after football or, work or later on in life? I, fi- I find that the, the topic of values is a rather modern thing 
And if we if we reflect back, maybe the same for you, Bruno, that your dad and your mother brought you up with values, <clears throat> but they weren't on a wall like you see in many offices or, or what have you today. They were habits. And, and you learn the habits of good behaviour, teamwork, trying your best and what have you. And then it's the penny drops later on, but it is instilled in you as a young person and you start behaving and, and reacting in that way, which I suppose leads on to one of the exciting points about Bruno when he said, hey, I really do want to be a professional footballer. Yeah, yeah, I've got yeah. one question on that. Yeah. When you, we're obviously going to touch on that story where <clears throat> you left home. You, you mentioned your dad um, was big on your education. How was he when you, <clears throat> excuse me, had that um, dream of the actual pursuit of being a footballer? I, there were, obviously, <laughs> everything came with a uh, responsibility, yeah? I think we spoke we spoke about that um, and it was about you know I mean I was really young age and I said to my dad um, I wanted to be the best football in the world and he and he said okay like then you know what it takes yeah um, and he's always with that responsibility but it's, it was because it was my you know I mean like my passion and, and I couldn't see anything else than that I, I, I mean uh, guys if it, if you would have been in my in my brain in the, at that time, it's just like nothing else than just football, 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 football. I would sit down after training session and with my football boots, just cleaning them and spending time with them. Even when I was a professional, like, you know, like professional teams, you finish training session day before the game and everyone puts the boots. I used to take my football boots with me and they, they used to sleep like next to me. You know what I mean? I need to, uh, because I didn't like the boots being just all of them together on the same bag, and I used to travel with them. You know what I mean? It's like it's, it's like you have to look after you. I I didn't like other people cleaning my boots. I always cl uh, clean because my boots. Because you wanted them so clean, or you no, didn't like the thought of them. It's because them. it's like it's, it's they are my tools. Right. They are my tools, and I want to look after my football boots. If you asking them to give you the best, it's like you have to. You know what I mean? You have to give something to to yeah. it as well. And I used to take my football boots, my shin pads, and it's like, okay, this is my, they are my tools, and I have to look after them. That's another. But when you're talking about values, for example, it's like now probably we have to put up all those values everywhere mm. because of the lack of them. Yeah, right. Because years ago, those values they were the norm, mm. and now they, they discussed, are not. Were they? But they were the norm. They were they were the norm that's because right. the, the discipline was there. Yeah. And now we have to put them up. Because they're not there, yeah. and yeah, that's and that's what, the challenge. What, what, why? Why is that changing? Why is that changing? <laughs> oh dear, <clears throat> that's a that's a tricky one. But I think we live in a world now where, aside from lots of awkward topics that would take this podcast in a completely <laughs> yeah. different direction, I think we've become a bit soft and ill-educated on how to get the best out of people. Um, scared of consequence or not fitting in or doing things in the perceived right way which is often led by media and if we follow those things that are predominantly media led it's a sad place um, when the actual good wholesome values start at home um, if we just believed in ourselves a bit more so I think uh, as parents we have a lot to do that with that yeah. with our generation actually. but not, not only not only us as parents but we touch on education and stuff surely within the education system as well needs to allude to that no? well yeah but within the education system there's parents as well so I, I yeah, mean yeah. parents adults yeah, yeah. in general our generation mm. um, may have dropped the ball a bit on that and I think it is time um, to do more about growing up values being a good person and those um, topics within schools mm. for sure and help the parents to instill them again because young parents of today may not have had them growing up themselves we're in a bit of a, a vicious circle on that yeah. um, but it's clear from yeah. your perspective that you had them which is great <coughs> so what I'm picking up from this is you had a relentless pursuit from a very young age to play football but I'm, I'm, I'm how old when you said that to your dad how old was you then I think I was like around nine years old probably Wow. Yeah, obviously I wasn't conscious of the level outside of yeah, my village yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's good I think it's good to to have uh, big dreams you know what I mean like I, when I go to a school sometimes and I speak to 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 kids it's just like okay guys listen you, you have explained this huh? and it's like if you put if you put you you it's not expectations it's just like you vision you goal here and you fight as much as you can like you, you don't know what you're gonna get like with hard work with passion we don't know where where our ability is gonna take us 
that's why you have to you know what I mean okay that's 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 the vision that's the goal then I'm gonna I'm gonna chase it and obviously that was messy let's say because that's the best player in the world <laughs> and I end up like down here you know what I mean it's like it's but I've been professional I've been lucky to be professional for 20 years then but if you put your goal here if you just like fighting for this where where do you get you know what I mean that's that's the that's why is is that that internal motivation that you do it for yourself not for anyone else it's just like yourself it's like okay what I want to achieve and and fighting for it yeah. and okay like you said dr don't be afraid to dream big right completely yeah right. So, so many of us, I think, uh, and, and and never stop dreaming. Like for me, I've posted something the other day, and I was talking about about this about dreaming. And actually, when we get a little bit older, sometimes we stop dreaming. Right? Mm. You come out, society gets hold of us, and media or whatever, and you stop dreaming. What, what, what? Why can we not go back to being that kid? And I know that there's responsibilities come in, and you know you might have to pay a mortgage. You got to do them, but I'm still a big <coughs> advocate for following your dreams at whatever age and still keep the same. I think what completely, completely agree. I mean, that's that's probably something that we've been losing. I think as well is the fear of what people they think. That is what stops people. And that is the sadness of the of the situation sometimes. The fear uh, of failure? No, f it's, it's not just failing. Because like failure, I think <coughs> I'm, I've got an strange relationship with failure. Mm. But... It's not failure. It's about other people's th uh, thoughts. Right. How you will be perceived. Yes. How you will be. And it's like, because we're living in this world right now that everything yeah. has to be yeah. towards the outside yeah. instead of towards the inside. Mm -hmm. Then it's like we're taking decisions not based on what we want to do. Yeah. We're taking decisions based on how it looks outside. Yeah. And, that is, and that is, for me, like one of the differences. It's like how, okay, you think... Do I want to do this? Can I do this? You know what I mean? Okay. Do I have the support to do it? Yeah. Do it. <clears throat> I'm aligned with you 1 million percent on yeah. that. Most people right now, it seems, are living their life trying to be the thing that they think they have to be as opposed to who they really are. Completely. And that's 100%. really sad. Within the gift of, um, or the opportunity to live your dreams, big advocate of that, as you know. Um, Within now, I was listening to a podcast recently where <clears throat> they they extended upon that a bit, which is going to lead to a question, if I may. Dreaming big is fantastic, but it's a destination on a journey that you may or may not reach. And I know we'll speak a bit in a minute about not reaching that goal and some of the things that happened in that process for you. But to dream big in certain areas is fantastic, but actually the journey in life is about finding, I believe, fulfillment and being happy with what you have while still having goals and motivations and dreams at the same time. And I think that's that's an art actually that is quite hard to do in that world that you're mentioning where we are we have we feel we have to be something or, or somebody that maybe we're not. So in that in that world of fulfillment, um that would be something I guess on, on the journey that I'd want to touch on a bit more because having everything in football from fame of course, it's it's a reasonably well paid job and what have mm -hmm. you. <coughs> Those things don't make everybody happy. Um, so that's something I want to touch yeah, on a bit yeah. later. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want. I guess for me, look, let's let's delve in. Uh, let's talk a little bit about about a little bit about your early career in Spain and like. I guess, and I'm I'm really keen actually to to look at the comparison between that career in Spain and when you then come over to right and the different cultures mm -hmm. and what that sort of looks like and, and different people you played under and, and the differences between that be keen to look at that. yeah ob obviously the, the the culture that's the i think the main point the culture thing is is the main shock you know i mean you move to england i was 31 years old with uh, with my wife and a four years old boy and one month old daughter like without speaking any english and then it's like whew, but because our approach to it, it was like it was our decision. We wanted to come here. Um, it was just like open to it, and we just like try to embrace everything and trying to adapt to the to the culture. That you don't think about that when you're playing in Spain. It's just like being, just being yourself. And you move here, and then you you have to adjust like certain things. And I think I think 
I've, I've got just good memories, you know what I mean, from from that movement. But yeah, football is different in Spain than here. Pressure is different in Spain than here. Uh, obviously, I came to a club where it's, it was in a in a journey towards getting to the Premier League. That is different that coming from, let's say, Valencia, where we were playing Champions League, where the pressure was massive, where like any game, a draw or a, or a loss is a, is a drama. Um, and you move to, you know I mean, a different country where... I mean, there is there are not many uh, newspapers and not that much pressure. And as a footballer, you just can't focus on being a footballer. Nothing else. The external noise is no aspic. Um, but yeah, I think there is a there is a big there is a big difference, and that's why a lot of Spanish players they find it um, um, really really positive. I, I met the uh, I met the other day uh, David Silva, who we used to play together, and we met on the uh, at the airport. And 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 he says like yeah he miss you know what I mean he miss Manchester as well you know what I mean it's like like the people you know what I mean just being able to be himself uh, going to the streets and blah 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 it's like it's a thing for people who we come from cultures that they are really passionate and and being in the streets is sometimes for that size of that size of players it's difficult. Um, I think it was a really good change uh, for me. Yeah, amazing. I, t- I tell you what, I just want to just flicking back, just as we was talking previously. I just wanted to to back to the point about sort of dreams and and where you were and that I guess that that dream to become that professional footballer, which you you, you did then achieve. You're playing in Spain. You're playing in Champions League football, and then the the I guess the enjoyment process you loved it right you tell you can tell how I'm passionate that 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 love all the way through your career always lo- always loved it no there's no there's, there is a lot of pain a lot of uh, <coughs> suffering I mean it's like we cannot lie yeah? it's like life there is suffering in life mm. like all of us uh, in different levels um, and in my career, I had suffering and I had difficult moments, like ups and downs, mm-hmm. um, and points where you almost, as I said earlier, you know, what I mean, you lose the motivation, but because you have the discipline and the passion, you wake up the day after and you keep going, you know, what I mean? and you find your motivation again. Um, but yeah, it's not been all the time, you know, what I mean, love and everything has been <laughs> nice, not at all, not yeah. at all. I had difficult moments from injuries, from not playing, where it takes you to dark places. And that in that moment, you cannot value them that now I do it. I mean, everything that has happened in my life, it was with a purpose to take me where I am right now. What was the first? knock that you had in your journey whether it was growing up or as a professional footballer because you, you spoke very much about the the security and strength of your family yeah. growing up and of course there will have been tough times in there but they're they're diluted as a child aren't they because you're protected and everything will be okay what was your first and toughest challenge that you remember and what was the consequence of how you acted um Probably it was when I moved, when I signed for Espanyol de Barcelona when I was 17. Uh, it was a really difficult first year in Barcelona. And and it was a difficult year because like, I had a difficult relationship with the coach. I wasn't like, I was playing, but not. And, and he always was really tough on me, right. always really tough. And it was a difficult, really difficult year. But I've learned to probably through... When you're saying yes to something, you're committing to it, you, you have to stick to it mm-hmm. until, you know what I mean, let's say the season finishes or until uh, you've got the opportunity to go, or, but you have to commit. And during that year, I've learned to listen, behave, train, just like controlling, just focusing on what I can control. You know what I mean? It was difficult and, and not being like or loved by the manager it's a difficult process by just focusing okay how can i train how can i behave like that's why i can control and that was um 
probably my first experience where it was difficult. Obviously, I had my parents next to me that they were coming every weekend to see me, like every game, and trying to be next to me and trying to support me. Um, but yeah, at 17, uh, it was my <coughs> first difficult experience that after during all the process as a, as a professional there have been you know i mean so many difficult moments so you mentioned the control aspect so that's something i had to pay a coach to learn when i was in my 40s the whole yeah. control influence or let go <coughs> you were 17 who taught you that no, I, I would say again it's education you know i mean it's just like my parents uh is focus on on listen you cannot control what the coach does. You cannot control. It's like just train well. That's your responsibility. That is you. That's why you left home when you were 14, 15. Keep, you know what I mean? Keep keep going, keep going, keep going. And and yeah, probably that's, that's you know what I mean? And, and, after, and after I've been probably, if you would ask me at that time, I wouldn't be able to articulate, ask yeah. can I, how I can articulate it right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're talking about control. It's like, okay, <laughs> we don't control what happens to us. We just control how we respond to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, 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 and when you learn that and you understand that, it, it changes the approach towards everything in life because you don't take it personally. You don't take it, uh, why is happening to me or why? No, 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 hold on. This is happening. Like how, how I respond is the only thing that I mean, I'm, I'm in control. But yeah, it's like it's, it's through this process it's been like a lot of difficult so moments. From, so to follow on from that, <coughs> you can't be the perfect human, right? So Completely. you're nine. <laughs> you you want to be a professional footballer. You've learned work ethic. You've got a strong family. You have one wobble when you're 17. You deal with that. But you said it was your toughest time. So what, what did that look like? What, what happened to Bruno then? Because something would have gone for you to know that that was a tough time what was going through no it's, it's just trying to look for for support and for for love obviously i was lucky to i was still studying and i quite actually focus as well a lot into into my studies and yeah. just trying to achieve okay that's i can achieve that as well um but i wouldn't say that was my my hardest my hardest time my hardest times it was my last year in uh, when i was playing for valencia for example is 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 I was injured. I came back. I wasn't playing as much, um, and I got into a like dark place. Um, as I said earlier, like at that time, I couldn't see why it was happening to me, and I couldn't see any positives. Where right now, mm. like I not right now, like a few years, like for the last few years, I've been able to understand. Okay, that happened to me because now I can help those players yeah. because I know how they feel when you're not playing when you don't feel loved, when you have an external pressure that you cannot manage, when you have an injury, when you have, it's no, I'm not going to them and speak from theory, I'm going to them speaking from my heart because they suffered that. What does, you mentioned a dark place, would you mind telling us? No, it's just like th that place where you feel, again, now we speak a lot about mental health. Mm -hmm. It's like, and, and probably I was keeping everything for, like just to me. I wouldn't get home and I wouldn't speak to my wife about football or about my feelings or about, because I didn't want to probably worry her or, you know what I mean? It was just like, okay, just trying to deal with myself. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is like you get in that circuit of, like you just like, you just going down, down and down and just like uh, overthinking and, and instead of just like being in the moment, trying to enjoy, like I was playing for Valencia, you know what I mean? I was playing Champions League, like wh how, how you can be <coughs> not enjoying it, how you cannot be present, how you cannot, uh, that was one of my dreams. Then is what I've learned from that is like communication is so important. Yeah. It's just like, it's actually not fair for the people around you that you don't share it because they want to help you. Are you, are you, are you better at that now? Yeah, 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 completely. I've changed after that experience. I've changed massively, massively, because I I understood that, as I said, like it's not fair on the people next to you to don't share it with them because they want to help you. And as soon as you just like articulate it, it's like everything just like just you know. I mean, it, it looks different, and it's it's. I think it's powerful when you just like share those those feelings. 
Okay, I'm just going to say something about one of our sponsors, Rivervale. The world of cars, vans and minibuses is often a pain point for many of us. The hassle of finding the right vehicle, let alone looking after it, are all more things to add to our lists as busy people. Rivervale's mission is to make motoring manageable, and that's why they provide leasing, purchasing, servicing and vehicle management. So whether you have one family car or a fleet of vans for your business, Rivervale are your trusted vehicle supplier. Visit www.rivervale.co.uk. Okay, let's jump back to the podcast. It, 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 I think that's such a powerful message for anyone listening, really, that because there's still, no matter how much we talk about it a lot more now with <coughs> mental health, there's still, there's still, unfortunately, that narrative, especially amongst men, that it, vulnerability is seen as weakness. And it, it, it's changing. There's a shift, yeah. definitely. But there, there's still... There's still that narrative out there, which you know, hopefully, conversations like this will help to change that because it's a sign of strength, right? Asking for help is a sign of strength. Right? <coughs> yeah, right. Yeah, com- completely. And I think I heard something that I think is it was just like so powerful. Someone said, um, "A healed human being, fixed human being, is much more beautiful, beautiful than a human being who never suffered." And it's completely, it's like, it's, it's like someone who has find difficult times uh, and has been going through and it's like, it's just like lean forward, lean forward. Like when you feel uncomfortable, when you feel like, hmm, this, this, this is hard, lean forward. Don't, don't think about it. If I might, I want to continue on that place where you work. Cause I think that's incredibly powerful, especially as a coach yeah. now for you and and a legend for people t- who are listening to this, right? What what were the things happening around you due to your withdrawal whilst in that dark place? What was happening? Because we all say we've been through tough times, but what do they actually look like? Injuries, not playing as much as, as, as you would like. And obviously as a footballer and as a selfish footballer, as soon as you don't play, you feel rejected. That's one of the challenges that us as coaches, we need to deal with. Um, my mom through that process went through, through cancer that she like, she did amazingly and, and she's, she's fine. And you know what I mean? It's like, it was a difficult, difficult period as well. Um, Valencia is a really high pressure environment where there are so many externals that can affect you because there is consistently and constant noise and imagine eh, like it, it's all these journalists they have to fill mm. newspapers uh, radio programs and <laughs> not everything that they say it's true yeah. Yeah, I mean it's like then it's like how you can I wasn't able to put myself in a space where nothing of that would affect me. Right. And <coughs> Which it, you it, had done for the years before. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So was it the first time you were feeling truly vulnerable? Yeah. Right. Yeah, completely. Completely. And but again, you know what I mean, that that you know what I mean, going through that and learning mm. through that and having my family next to me. You know what I mean, you just become a new, new version of yourself, and like again, you know what I mean. It's, you're much more powerful. You are much more like aware of everything, and and but yeah, it's like it's so many things in that moment that that affects you. Um, how long did it take you to come out of that place? No, it, it, it didn't take me that long. It didn't take me that long. Um, first, again, I moved to England, and then it, it's just like poof. So you that know was I mean? part of the. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, it was like, I always lo- I always wanted to come to England to play football because it's, you know I mean, I always like follow Premier League and, and always thought like, and that time it felt, again, <laughs> life puts you things in front of you, you know I mean, you think we are in control and, and it's like, no, life puts you that opportunity, I could have stayed in Spain, but it put, like, it put me that opportunity in front of me and I said like, hmm, that feels right. Yeah. And then... You just like you just go and move on. You know what I mean? That's that's the. But it didn't took me. You know what I mean? It wasn't like years of yeah. of pain. I would say it was months, months of like dying. Football mm. is a lot of time. Yeah. Did it affect how you were playing? 
Yeah, completely. Yeah. Completely, because again, you, you, you're not able to be present. You're not able to be in your flow. You're not able to just enjoy your football. You're just like thinking. And when you're thinking in football, mm. too late. Um, t- t- touching on that, I guess, but then being, being in the moment, this, we alluded a little bit to it earlier about fulfillment, enjoying the journey. Uh, look, look over a, a career as long as you've had and still go now coaching, etc. And so many highlights, and we'll touch on that, I'm sure, a bit later. But because uh, um, I always talk about that, about that destination, because we've got to have goals, we've got to try and achieve, and we want to try and achieve, especially if you're ambitious, you're going to try and achieve. <coughs> but looking back over your playing career, I guess. Can you look back and go, I was in the moment at that time? Or is it always looking at the next thing, looking at the next thing? I think I enjoy the moment. Yeah. But you, you, yeah, I think I think I did. I think I did. I think you have to enjoy every every win. But I'm that type of person. I'm not too high. I'm not too low. You know what I mean? I'm always like in that, mm. you know what I mean? That moment that is like, I don't like to go too high. I don't like to go too low. And... By enjoy the moments. Yes, it's true that you enjoy it differently. When you are when you are young, when you are really young, mm-hmm. you think that you're invincible, that you have plenty of them to come, and blah blah. And the older you get, uh, the more dif- you enjoy it differently because you know that the end is closer, and it's like you you trying to maximize that enjoy, and every win is important. Mm-hmm. It changes the perception of of it. But I think I did. I think I did. Like I've been lucky to to have really good moments and enjoy all those wins. And at the same time, especially later in my career, I try to enjoy when I lost a game as well. So that <coughs> see, I, I, I would say because I've spoke to uh, you know players who you've played with on on the podcast. I've spoke to Olympic champions and. People who have reached huge financial wealth in business, and and there's not many of them that actually give me that that answer. Could because they don't, because they're so fixated on that destination, they're so fixated on that goal, don't allow themselves them moments to yeah. to go. So what what I guess what is it about you that allowed you to do that over your career? Again, are we, are we looking back at. Your upbringing, or yeah, no, I, I would say I would say that because I think football, for example, like when you're achieving something big, is actually really big for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. That excitement, let's say, I had, I don't know, how, like I would say four or five promotions. That for every city, it's been the biggest thing, maybe in the last forty years, in the fifty years. Then it's impossible to don't be present when you see two hundred thousand people in the streets. <laughs> How are you not going to enjoy? You know what I mean? How are you not going to be, you know what I mean? Like just in that moment, embracing and the situation forced you to to enjoy it. And I've been lucky to be in those situations a few times. Mm. Or um, first game in the Champions League. It's like, it was a normal game, but suddenly it's just like before the game, the, you know what I mean? The, the anthem just... Mm goes and it's like who that's that's cool you know what i mean that's 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 different <coughs> I, I, I think football is emotions that i don't know if in other in other you know i mean in other businesses how involved you are in that mm. and because maybe my passion comes from when i was two three four years old yeah. like allows you different but i'm not saying that for example i've been worried about the future a lot of times why? Because I knew that my skills they were football, and I knew that's got a an end. Yep. And I was worried. Okay, what's gonna happen after? Like, what's gonna be my life after that? Because I thought like that's my skills, but my skills they're gonna take me just to half way of my life, max. Then that was probably sometimes where I was focusing in the future that didn't allow me to enjoy the present. But I would say when I achieve something. I've I've enjoyed it. I've the, enjoyed it. The wins in football that you mentioned, the promotions and um, trophies and that type of stuff. In, in business, they're like doing a deal, a sale, yeah. or 
you know, reaching some milestone in, in your journey. The, the actual fun in football, fun in football and fulfilment may come from the dressing room, the training, the fun, banter, and yeah. all of those places. I would imagine you've been a good yeah. force for good throughout your journey in that in that capacity as well, right? It's it's, it's how you make feel people, huh? Mm. And that's and that's at the end of the day, like that's why people remember you is is because how you make them feel. Yeah. And that is that is so important. And and I think that's why it takes you to the seeing people outside in the streets. I remember the parade here in, in Brighton, for example. It's like. Like, I've got goosebumps, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's it's incredible seeing people like, and, and how, you go, how you're not gonna be present, how you're not gonna be trying to enjoy that moment with them. It's hand, like, y- you do it. It's like just the situation, the emotions takes you towards that. That's why I think football is a little bit um, probably different. But uh, would, would you, have you spoke to other players about that? Do you uh, do you do you get the feeling that that they all enjoyed them their moments, or have you have anyone spoke to you that they've not, or that they don't feel like you did at the time? Yeah, I, I, like obviously inside every team there are different roles. Like how much you play, how important are you yeah. for the team, how the fans they love you, how you know what I mean, and then. The, the all those if you put those marks the higher you are in all those marks the more engaged you feel yourself in that process that's the difficult bit with you know i mean with any business in any sport because uh, obviously the less you play the less engaged you feel but i think right now coaches they they find in the way because they've got much more knowledge about understanding human beings is like how you how you make everyone feel important because everyone has got a role and and and, and everyone is important that's why i always when they, i had like interviews and I get involved in like any of you know i mean podcasts or whatever yeah because the team because yeah because these players yeah, yeah. i said listen guys without there the are players that they're not playing as much without these guys we wouldn't be here because these guys they're pushing us to our the, our best version of ourselves, to the the guys who we play in the most, mm-hmm. and when I wasn't playing that much, I was that guy, who was I was training every day, giving everything, to <laughs> let the other guy know. Like, listen, if you drop here just a second, I, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna take your place. That's why you know. I mean, it's understanding those roles. It's 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 so important. Okay. Well, look, just just while while we're touching on. Uh, some of the highlights you've sort of mentioned. If if we had to put you on the spot to pick one, Oof. have all of the all Oof. of them Champions League, the, you know, Brian. If you could pick one, what would it be? It's that's like it's not the first time. Obviously, that I made that question, and 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 it's probably the hardest question because every moment has got a special, you know, I mean, feeling. Um. But there is a moment in my in my career that I felt in peace. That it was my last game for Brighton. When I played my last game at home against Manchester City, when I saw the love, the respect from everyone towards my family and towards me, I was ready to stop playing football and I felt Okay, that is amazing. That was probably is one of my best moments uh, that I had in my in my career. I was there for that. <laughs> the, the, most of the stadium were in tears. Yeah. And then he, he got the. I think Man City won the. Yeah, they won the, the they won the title. Yeah, that, that day and they picked the trophy up and yeah. the love of, for you off of all of them as well. Yeah, I mean. Uh, even the city fans, they were, you know, singing yeah. my name. I mean, it was like, couldn't, you know what I mean? When you're thinking about all those sacrifices that you make uh, since really young age, yeah. and all these difficult times, good times, family, and being able to share it with my family, who they, who they were there. Yeah, it's, you know what I mean? It's probably the best moment. And do do you do, do you feel that like you said you was ready to retire at that point? What 
had you then thought about obviously had you been thinking about life after football and what would come next and talk to me a little bit about that okay <laughs> that that is one of the biggest things for footballers mm. imagine in life anyone eh? how difficult to find your passion mm. imagine finding two you have to find two passions and I always something that it's it was like bothering me. You know what I mean? It's like something okay, but I was ready to stop playing playing football because that's my brain was ready. You know what I mean? It was like yes, that's I cannot push more. You know what I mean? It's so many sacrifices, daily sacrifices, not just myself, family as well. <coughs> and I was I was ready and in peace with myself. But I was lucky to. The club allowed me to stay and just, you know what I mean, see what's what's gonna be the next chapter. I mean they trust me <coughs> to stay around and obviously new coaches came, Graham came and allowed me to be there and then the 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 role developed and I found a new passion. You know what <laughs> I mean? That's in, it's incredible. I never thought I was gonna be a coach. I always had so much respect to managers and coaches that I always thought, I, I don't know if I'm you know, I mean, I'm good enough for that. I don't know if I'm, I will have that passion to do that job. But I realize that yes, that's that's what I like. That's what I feel passionate about, and that's why you know, I mean, I'm doing it now. But then, so, pro so prior to that opportunity that they that was presented, then you wasn't sure you, you wasn't no. thinking about going into coaching you, you did you have any other ideas any other thoughts no what, i like, but that's always been when i said like yeah. i didn't my only fear i'm thinking about future was that because i didn't know like okay like, like what's what's the other skills that i've got you know what i mean my skills is like this playing football it's like what, what i'm gonna do and i remember having a conversation with uh, unai emery the aston villa manager who uh, he was my manager for five years and and I remember having a conversation one day. I said, like, I don't know what you think. I think I think you could go into coaching and, and being a manager. I said, like, Unai, I said, I've, I've, I've got so much respect for what you do. Yeah, you know I mean, like, I think it's a really difficult job. And, and I really value what you do, guys. And, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I remember having that conversation uh, because I've always been, like, really respectful and to, to that role that maybe took me a little bit, like... But as soon as I got involved and... Because I'm a I'm a strict perfectionist as well. Like if you want to do something, you want to do it a hundred percent. And until I didn't feel okay, this is looking good, this is I feel comfortable, I, I feel that I've got the passion, the purpose to do it at the full, then is when I realize yes, poof, let's go. Within coaching with that hundred percent perfection, how do you deal with the players that may not have that? mentality and focus that you've got uh, it's trying to understand why is 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 uh, what, what what do you need to understand as a let's say with my way to to see the world is just like don't how i see it they ha everyone has to see it the same way mm. it's like that's that's me mm. and i have to project that to towards other people and my standards have to be my standards they don't have to be other people's standards. It's like it's understanding that, and and players they, they just like try their best with what they know. Yeah. Any human being try their best with what they know, their environment, where they grew up, um, how emotionally they've been coached. It's, it's they are consequence. All of us we are consequence of our environment of our. I mean, yeah. daily routines. Then it's like it's understanding that and understanding every player as an individual. That is, you know, what I mean, and then you deal better. Where with did you learn that? that? Because when you look at football over the years, that's yeah. certainly not how coaching is. It if you don't agree with me, yeah, then you're this, that, and the other. So uh, that's I, a really I, modern way of managing. And yeah, I, I would say, I would say because since my dad, my dad is a doctor. And my dad has been traveling to Africa with my mom most of the times for the last 30 years to help people. And they've been going there for six months, for three months, for two months, um, just trying to 
make the difference and you know what I mean and and help basically. Um, and that gives you a completely different perspective of how life can be. Mm. And I'm so grateful, as I said, f since the minute, first minute, for my education and understand how lucky I am to be where I am right now. And when you are, and when you can, when you learn that from really young age, you're able to put yourself in other people's shoes. Yeah. Because, let's say, my dad used to come from, from these trips, and for the first few weeks or month, he wasn't the same, the same, same guy. I didn't realize at that time, but after I opened up a little bit more, he would say, like, Bruno, it's, it's difficult to come back when you know that people without you there they don't have a chance. Like when you come back here, you're thinking about them. You're thinking, because he will go there, he will do surgeries, he will teach, he will help people, and he will have to follow different injuries that he knows being in Spain, mm -hmm. that guy doesn't have a chance because he, my dad is not there. Then for the first few weeks, first months, he, he wasn't the same guy. But then all those conversations, it just gives you the platform to understand life from a different point of view and not just yourself. <laughs> it's, listen, we, I'm so grateful for everything that I've got in life. You know what I mean? So grateful. I'm 0.00, .00 something percent. And when you are, and when you can see that, and most of us we are, just been here, what are the chances that we're sitting here now? Mm -hmm. It's like, really small do we value that probably not because it's our day by day it's like when they say like you, you're so grateful eh, that that eh, because you're a footballer and blah blah I say footballers they don't wake up every day and say yeah it's like because it's the every day by day is 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 day day by day it's like the same as i said to the kids listen are you grateful when you wake up and you have running water light and they say but well, that's normal eh? so it's normal here mm -hmm. it's not normal in other places I mean, perspective gives you, it's so powerful. And that's what I've learned from family, you know what I mean, yeah. from my family. Then it gives you the chance to understand education. Like, okay, is this player, is this young kid acting this way because it's a consequence of his environment? It's not his decision. It's sometimes it's not his decision. Obviously, we've got our own responsibilities, but it's a consequence of, of that. You, you mentioned education that essentially is how you've got to that yeah. mindset and what a gift it is. Yeah. Through your football career, you would have worked or been managed by managers who yeah. really do not understand that. Um, how did you cope in those times, obviously, that there would have been physical, verbal disagreements and what have you? I'm, I'm less interested in those. Yeah. But more, more how do you get around being your, the best version of yourself despite the, um, the different um, commitment in that area. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, completely. Uh, at the end of the day, you try to embrace the good coaches that they spend time with you and they try to help you. Um, and and obviously taking the best, you learn from everyone. Mm. The good things and the bad things. It's like how you want to do things and how you don't want to do them. You know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's it's just trying to see life in that, like, okay, as an opportunity. You know what I mean? To every situation, it gives you an opportunity to learn. Like, how you want to do it or how you don't want to do it. And and I've been going through, as I said, like difficult moments with coaches and you just try to embrace them. But the, the key is that keep going and keep going and keep going and lean forward and it's not fear and it's just like consistency, consistency, consistency. And that's what you, you just like breaking walls all the time. It's just like poof. And I come back the day after and I come back the day after and I come back the day after. You're talking about failure earlier it's like it's not giving up it's like for me not giving up is completely the opposite to failure it's like it's just like non-stop 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 non -stop. i didn't achieve it it's like did i fail because i didn't become the best football like player in the world like from from if you analyze it just like objectively i failed 
no? It would be, no, you didn't achieve. Yeah. Because <coughs> success, <coughs> success yeah. is achieving something that you aim. But, uh, <laughs> like, I love my life, you know what I mean? I love what I achieve, I loved, like, everything that is around it. Yeah, and you learn an incredible amount, which is what Completely. you get from failure. Completely. That's how you deal with it, Completely. isn't it? Ah, that, that failure thing is like I've got a special relationship failure it's a good thing it's, yeah but I, I, like failure is when you give up you fail when you stop trying okay well, that's your way of looking at it that's my way to look at yeah. it do, but do, how are you then at something where you look and go I've done my best it's, did, it's not worked out I've done my absolute best and it's the right decision to stop now, for whatever reason. What do you What do you think about that? That's that's a yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a great question because it's maybe you're feeling that it's not bringing the best version of yourself, and you say, like, no, "I need to, I need to stop this and move and move on." But is is it that failure, or is it a readjustment of of your goal? Yeah, it's a good way of looking. I I only, I only use that. that because I can give an example of that in, in the fact that I, I, you knew me when I, cl- I closed this, the hair salon my first business it, it, it's, it failed it didn't work out I lost I did stop but I did I, one thing that got me through was that I remember coming out that day and going I've done everything I could to make this work and it didn't I felt like I'd give it my best yeah. and my best wasn't good enough and, and I had to deal with that Completely. and that's something that you, you take away but actually then again it's how you reframe that in your head right so how I reframed that Completely. narrative of failure, of I failed, is it that part of my learning process? It's got me where I am right now. It got me to that point in my life, got me to meet people who then yeah. took me on that further journey. So it's just, for me, so much of it, failure, is the narrative that we tell ourselves and how we do. So as you just mentioned there, yeah. about changing that in your, in your mind and reframing it is so, exactly. it's so important. 100%, I think. I, I can understand and I can feel the conversation going off if I <clears throat> got too into this. I can understand, for example, as a professional athlete, how you must have goals that do not accept and ultimately I can see how failure is a thing that is a bad thing. But then at the same time, if that is your endless pursuit and you fail and you deal with it in the wrong way, in, in old school failure ways, then that's not great I think it's all about the learning the readjustment in the pursuit of that further destination so there may be mini goals along the way in your journey <clears throat> which you may achieve you may not but they're not your ultimate destination so for me the ultimate destination is becoming a better person Completely. whereas winning a trophy wouldn't be the be all and end all but it would be a goal that if I didn't win okay I failed but Crikey, I tried my best, yeah. and it's all part of a wider contribution. And it, it's 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 a reasonably complex area, but I can see. Yeah, how. completely. I, I think at the <coughs> end of the day, it's like you've got your vision that is not tangible. Yeah, it's not something that you can. It's like a. I think we spoke about that. It's an utopia. Mm. Utopia is. If you if you if you imagine like um, the longest point that you can see, and you just like, okay, you take two steps forward and that longest point takes two steps back and you take another two steps forward and that the furthest point it takes two steps back and you're just like chasing mm. and then utopia what, what what's the what's the use for utopia and it's it, it, it helps you to keep moving yeah. and that vision you probably will never you know what i mean achieve it it, because it's not tangible, you, you cannot measure it, it's not something. But then you set up your, your goals that, yes, the goals, they are tangible and they, you can achieve it. But it's good to have that, you know what I mean, like as a team, as a human being, as a yeah. whatever, athlete, okay, I want to become, yeah. you know what I mean, like a high-performance uh, uh, athlete. In, and what that means, yeah, like trust, but how you measure trust, how you measure accountability, how do you measure... I mean, you cannot measure it. It's like, it's, it's something that is no, then it's like, it, that helps you to move, to move forward. That's, that's I think, which it's so important. If you, I think 
a lot of it, what we've talked about today, words like fulfilment, happiness, and enjoyment, like you said, and trying to be present in those, those moments, that the key is, is it's important to have them goals, it's important to strive and, and, and have them things, but actually the, the key, when it comes to fulfilment and happiness, is, is actually not delaying that happiness to, to where, that, not to not saying, I'll be happy when I get there, I'll be happy when I've achieved that, that goal, that destination somewhere in the future. That's when that's when I'll be everything will be okay then. <coughs> it's about actually right this second, right where we are right now, being happy and fulfilled. Completely. And still wanting to achieve, but not delaying that. Completely. For me, my equation or how it looks my happiness equation is being grateful. Like that is the first thing. Like for everything that I've got. Like just is so powerful when you're grateful for everything and you value what you have that's the first step and after the next one is development if you feel that you're moving forward yeah. if you feel that you're just like getting developing yourself being, being the best version that you can and moving forward all of those those two together me personally is how i feel like i'm happy this is geo geo runs a scarf company geo doesn't see the need for telecoms Everybody uses mobiles now, but can a mobile really be a business phone? Geo is having coffee with a client, Gabby. Well, actually, Geo prefers acacia leaf tea. But what happens when someone calls? It could be a big no deal. Surely it would be rude to take the call? But many people hate leaving messages. They may just call a competitor instead. What can Geo do? The answer is simple. Turn the mobile into a business phone. With the GoGiraffe app, Geo can quickly transfer the call. Or, before the meeting, Geo can simply use the app to divert calls. No more missed calls, lost deals or unhappy customers. Turn your mobile into a business phone today. GoGiraffe. And I get the, the key that I've taken, from this, and this is something maybe that as a society we don't do enough, and I'm trying again back to the kids and stuff trying to do but the, the gratitude side of it you learn that from a young age because of a lot to do with what your parents mm. did as a living and you can come up but how many we live in a society where like my kids on Amazon bang get that, that next day that yeah. you know there's no delayed gratification they just want something instant you can look on the thing and you get it so to, to, to teach that um, and I'll try and teach my kids all the time gratitude is the one of the biggest things from doing nearly 100 of these, that is the thing for me Completely. that I've taken out massively. I mean, yeah. You mentioned your proudest moment, <clears throat> almost a utopia moment when it was your last game as yeah. a professional. I think I know the answer, but I can, I can only imagine. What was the toughest time for you in your latter career? Um, obviously... Um, Leaving Brighton was was probably one of the saddest moments in in my career. It was a mix of emotions, but the, to deal with the sadness of everything, it was it was uh, probably the hardest uh, that I've recent last like few years I had to deal with. That was um, yeah, it was a really difficult moment. You're an incredibly private person, and I think anyone. Mm. <clears throat> excuse me, listening to this today who didn't know you as well as they may know you, having listened to this, will be, I think amazed is a bit of a strong word, but <clears throat> very positively surprised that you're very considered, you're very humble, you're very grateful. You've always come across that way mm -hmm. within your time with Brian. But of course there were a minority of <clears throat> fans who were hurt, and hurt often leads to anger. How how did that affect you in that moment of change when you were already sad, um, but other things started to happen? Yeah. Why, um, when you decided to leave? I, again, you know, what I mean, is I'm I'm not gonna expect or ask to people to understand my reasons. You know, what I mean, it's it's everyone is free. You know, what I mean, to to feel or think whatever they want to feel. You know, what I mean, I'm. I'm not, I don't have that expectation. I just say, I just the only thing that I can say. I, I think I, I, in my last um, social media post, just when I left Brighton, I think I, I describe it the best I could. 
and it was imagine uh, a 14 15 years old um chasing a dream having to leave his home the warmth of his house the food of his mom uh, his brother his sister his friends and on sundays taking a bus at seven o'clock to go to somewhere else and i was something away and be the whole week on your own chasing a dream is leaving home it's so difficult and that's how i felt that's exactly how i felt but i knew it was the right decision i knew it and the sadness is there the sadness is there but as we said earlier life is about suffering life is about leaning forward lean forward lean forward and that's how i felt is your heart still in brighton i'm still here <laughs> I'm still here. I mean, it's, uh, this is home for us. You know, what I mean, it's like for my family, this is home and and my community. You know, what I mean, it's like I've got such an amazing friends. I feel blessed for all the people I've got around. You know, what I mean, again, I'm not. I won't get tired to say how grateful I am for all the people I met here, around here. What all this community has given to me. <laughs> Like, I'm telling you, my feelings towards everyone in this city didn't change at all for the circumstances or whatever. I've got to know you quite well in the last few years, obviously, because our mm -hmm. boys play football together. <coughs> and you wore the best football kit, obviously, with Brian and Hope Johnson <laughs> on it uh, yeah. for a few years. Exactly. Um, I can say hand on heart that there are very few people I know with your stoicism and approach to life and for the minority of fans who are still angry um, I would urge them to see that I know and have seen <clears throat> through candid conversations that we've had mm -hmm. that you said when you left once a seagull always a seagull I believe that Completely. always to be the case <clears throat> but life does move on and not everything that is great lasts forever does it so it's new opportunities for you and I would say that the majority the vast majority of, of Brighton fans and those in those circles would be really proud of what you've done, grateful for it, and maybe excited for the future for you, right? I appreciate you that. you deserve. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Because I do, as, as we've sort of talked about in, in the past, actually, as well as human beings, what is that next stage? I, you still want to progress and go on. And what, people shouldn't begrudge people of that. Sure yeah, that's right. I think that's the, the, the thing. But They're hurt. I understand they've been hurt. Yeah, you know, of course, of course. Brighton have been on such an incredible journey. And Bruno was a huge part of it. I remember when he signed and they were singing Bruno songs. I thought, Frank Bruno had turned <laughs> some, some world superstar. And there was this, this Spanish guy with no hair. Oh, how disappointing. And then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. And then over the years, he, you know, he, he became Brighton and Hove Albion, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. From it. absolutely um, yeah. So there were people that were hurt, and I completely get that. Um, how some of them acted and stuff, that, that's no good. And I would imagine those minority would be disappointed in, in that. But like I said just before, the, the vast majority are, are in love with him. Like he, he goes to the, the football and he drops the kids off at the, um, at the football with my boy and stuff. And it, Can I have a picture? Can I have a picture? Can I have a picture? <laughs> it, it's non-stop. And that's nice to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'll make that continue. I appreciate that. Well, no, I want to just talk, I just want to talk briefly about then going it on afterwards obviously went on, on to sort of Chelsea one thing I just want to touch on throughout your career I guess look I, I talk a lot on here about imposter syndrome mm -hmm. and what that looks like to people you've gone from being a player not potentially thinking about going into coaching mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're at Chelsea and through various circumstances you're there now in charge of a game against mm -hmm. Liverpool what I'm just keen to just tap into your mindset at that point. What goes through your head when you're put in that position? I think it's it's really important. Like again, like I think my personality and has helped to that because you don't get too high, you don't get too low, and then you're able to think as clear as you can think. But my approach to that has always been: if someone has believed in you to put you there in that situation, in any situation, just be yourself. That's 
that's that was my you know I mean anything that I face in my life is like just be yourself. Don't try to change anything. Don't try to fake anything. Be yourself. And obviously, I understand. You know, I mean, there are insecurities. All of us. Yeah. You know I mean, all of us. We've got insecurities, and I've been. That I think it's insecurities. They're good. I think that if you can control them, they're good, because they help you to move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, as a player, some I ha- I would say that I step into the pitches always with certain amount of fear. That fear kept me alert for ninety five minutes. That means that I was able or trying to be at the right place at the right time all the time because you are in that fear mode that you can control. The problem is when that fear is too big and you can control that, then that frees you and you're not able to perform. But if amount of fear is important, amount of insecurity, it's good. I think it's good because it helps you to, okay, I can do things a little bit better. I can... It's not just like, no, I know everything and, yeah, I mean, I'm perfect. Because you get complacent then, right? If you yeah. do go into it, every situation in that, in, with that mindset, you become complacent. Whereas if you're always striving to be the best and you, and you know, um, whether that's a little bit out of that comfort zone or, and there is that fear, as you sort of mentioned, that nerves, whatever it Completely. is, all of those things are, like you said, if you can manage them, because some people, that stops them from doing yeah. anything. But if you can manage them, you can achieve yeah. great things. Exactly. And, and understanding that, uh, that fear and excitement sometimes gives you the same feeling. Mm. Because and you, need to, you need to be able to, you know what I mean, this thing is like going into the game, you, you, you feel a little bit of fear, but the excitement as well to perform. Mm. But it's the same physical feelings. Then it's like how you manage that. That's why it's so important to be able to identify that. That's why now we've got, in football or in everywhere in life, we've got so much information that helps you to, you know what I mean, to help players to be self-aware and identify all those emotions and and, um, and develop that. But yeah, going back to the point is, it's a little bit of fear and insecurity is good because it keeps you alert and not being overconfident that probably being overconfident it will kill you actually what was the buy-in <clears throat> from the team during that game so I, I imagine some of the younger players oh Bruno's in charge what's Bruno no you know the ones who don't know you so well um, and you would have had a tiny power on your shoulder maybe saying God you know, do I know what I'm doing how did you deal with that scenario again going back to being myself just like be yourself that's the only thing that you we go back to what you can control mm. and just like okay what what can i control is this and again did you bring it up no no it's just like again you know what i mean it's 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 difficult uh, to get into the situation you know what i mean it's, it's just more about from zooming out and seeing it from outside mm. in terms of like how i dealt without getting into the detail. You know what I mean? It's more about, okay, I go back to the same point. It's just like, listen, if you're here, it's for a reason. <laughs> do whatever you can, whatever you are ready to do, yeah. be yourself. That's it. You know what I mean? You do you not ask for more than that. You know what I mean? It's just like being content uh, with that moment and deal with the best you can. That, as you can imagine, guys, um, it was a really difficult moment yeah. uh, for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Well, look, um, <coughs> as I knew it would, it's been an absolutely fascinating conversation. And um, as we're coming towards the end, we're going to sort of finish off with our, our life in 60 seconds, um, which is one of the main reasons, I guess, are the main points of the podcast for me the tagline helping the world to see success differently um it's the question i ask everyone and when they come on i'm just keen to where you where you've been where you are now and where you're going tell me how you define success like success objectively is is achieving something that you aim eh? that that would be objectively we look for that uh, definition but for me i can tell you how success looks for me and that is um, 
getting back home from work and seeing my family happy to see me. That is success for me. Success is being able to maximize my passion of playing football for 20 years or since I was like, whatever, 14, you know what I mean, until almost 39, but 20 years a professional. Being able to spend that time doing what I loved, that was success. Success is having friends who I can share good things, good moments of my life, and they're happy for me. Meeting people who they special um, and they support and they give me something to me in terms of uh, helping into my development. That is success for me. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's so many different things um, that we can look at it as a, how it looks for me. But as you said, and you did it perfectly, how it looks to me, it is, it looks, it's so different how it looks to other people. Um, but that would be, that would be probably how it looks for me. Mate, what does the future hold for you? Am I in control of that? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Am I in control of that? The future looks like trying to develop myself every single day. Oh, in this conversation, I have learned so much. Then it's like, this is preparing me for the next step. Life is going to put me a challenge and I will try to deal the best I can in the best version of myself in that moment. And that's how I see it. I, I don't think I'm in control of that. You know what I mean? Life will, you know what I mean? Who would say like 12 years ago, not 12, no, 11 years ago, um, when I was in Valencia and I thought I would be already living in England, in, in Brighton for 11 years. I can imagine it's like if they 11 years ago they would have asked me like what is future for you impossible I would have answered like this you know I mean all this amazing journey I mean then it's like I try to enjoy everything that I do try to um, maximize and develop myself as much as I can to be ready for whatever comes into my path amazing mate honestly it's been a, a true honor to have you on oh, really thank you. just an incredible conversation and and really getting to know the real you i guess and and what and as i mentioned in the introduction uh, a, a legend on the football pitch but absolutely as a human being a legend off the pitch as well and um, i'm just using your words i'm so grateful for your time oh, thank you for you coming on it's been um it's been magic and uh, and bruno too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And that's a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, guys, I, I just I just want to say thank you so much for having me. Um, it's not just what you do, guys. It's how you do it. It's it's amazing, and and I feel I felt like if I was at home, and and I loved it. Uh, it was my pleasure. Thank you, thank you very much. Well done, Sal. And that, as they say, is a wrap. <laughs>